Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. What's up, folks? I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horn, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the Start that over, y'all. I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included <laughs> Lena Horn, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and or over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. Uh, usually Negroes know that when this bourgeois negro walks through the door he is not doing something that he's initiated himself but he's involved in something in which the white man is the absolute author of and has sent him to the negro community for some information and when they give that negro some information let me stop that that's malcolm brother malcolm look i started off with that just for our test just for the absoluteness of it and to show you the lie that is black culture or black people coming together as one this was in the 60s, I believe it was like 65, if I'm not mistaken. But back then, this is one of their, their champions, Brother Malcolm X. And he did, he, he revealed a lot. And you can get a lot from him, right? I did, I, I've learned a lot. He didn't teach me anything, but I learned a lot from him looking at his life, how he moved, what he was involved with. And here, in plain English, he's saying, um, with all the followers that followed Malcolm X. Don't trust the celebrities, don't trust the press. They've been put there by people to leak out information in a certain way that you take it on. And I talk about comprehensive thinking and critical thinking for blacks. It's just no thinking, you don't think about it at all. The people just call themselves black. I'm not black. And the people that are will take that offensively. They're mad that I don't identify with a term that people that ruled you with that term called you. Now you endeared to it. You'll fight somebody for it and you identify with it. At one time, one time, that was the thing that unified the people that were enslaved. They thought it was their skin tone here and only here. Because throughout the world, the rest of the world, the color, the skin didn't make a difference. It was a caste system. Either you had or you didn't have. And that's been the situation with mankind. The haves, however they got it, are the haves. And it's people that don't have spending their life trying to become a have. And they control you with that at all levels. So these people that's black, your morality, your morality your morality is what makes you enslaves you and keep you under anybody for one you only trust information that the people that enslaved you gave you and it's some sick shit now it's lies and it's the truth everywhere and the more morally sound you are the easier it is to sniff out a lie. But when you are a liar yourself, deceitful yourself, and it's, most of you are liars. Anybody that's claiming God to celebrate Christmas, birthdays, anything, you are a liar. And I'm telling you a liar right to your fucking face and there's nothing you can do about it. This book, that book that you towed around is the conviction. Everything I say in terms of how I'm supposed to behave, it comes right out of that book. You have deceitful ass men. I'm going to smoke in a second. Islam. For some reason in their head, Islamic or whoever, all these fucking men that walk around in the flesh with a heart, pancreas, lungs, liver, just like me, got the fucking audacity to say they know better than me. And this is off limits when the order creation from the creator that I serve, I know I comb through that book so you can't make me your fucking slave because illiteracy is another reason why people got enslaved. Everybody couldn't read. And the few that could used it to their advantage. The fucking ruling class on purpose. 
So what are you niggas with organs, hearts, and all that shit? You don't speak for me. I'm self lord and master. Now, it's okay if you want to call out, get underneath the white man, because that's who told you. That's who, that's who banned drugs. That's who controlled drugs. And it's no fucking way you get in line with any colonizer. Like, he going to tell you something that's good for you. And then he opened a drugstore. You silly ass religious nut fucking bags. I don't care who you are, what your title is. It means nothing to me because it's not certified by Allah. You just men. Y'all walking around playing games and people got the audacity not to believe me. I'm not the fucking ruling class and I don't require anything from y'all. What I'm saying benefit you. I'm not a messiah. But I ain't a fucking slave. And I don't answer to men. Blacks, you do. Blacks, you will. You don't have a choice because you are black. That's what it is. You got named black. Somebody named you that. Somebody called you that. And you answer to it. I show people my ID that I made, that I created, and you think it's a joke. You're like, yo, that ain't no good. Who told you you could write that? You understand now? And as long as you think like that, they'll step right in and write it for you. And have you think for generation and generation, if you don't have paperwork with those that colonize you, you don't exist. Or they won't let you participate in society. And that's the thing that they've been able to hide, cover up, and people are afraid of. You see third world countries? They that way because they won't play ball in the United States of America, along with their friends and other governments just like them, cut these people off. They threaten that in these United States of America. However, that constitution that blacks are afraid of, that you can't read, that you need somebody else to interpret for you, it protects every right that the fake, phony, invisible God, that atheists and all these people that are on the side of control, dismiss, you don't have to see the God. You don't have to be able to draw the God. You don't have to have any visual picture of the God. It's in the manuscript. For those that, the scholarly, all you motherfuckers that read, how y'all manage to miss this? When I spoke to you, you ain't see no face, nothing, nothing but a voice, meaning it's instructions. Those instructions are with you every day. You won't need to, Hear them every day that written down, etched in stone with the finger. Y'all read though, right? So y'all bullshit. You're not scholarly and you're not morally sound. That's who black people are. And that's what you get treated like a black people. You can't comprehend. You can't critically think. Somebody has to lead you to the water, put a cup there, a straw, a sippy cup, tilt your head up, all of that. Stop you from choking. That's who you are in society. And you are the loudest, most aggressive, dysfunctional group of people on the planet. And it hurt, don't it? So what y'all going to do about it? Threaten me to stop saying it? Because that's what the fuck you are. 80% of you baby moms, single moms. Not interested in marriage, huh? The creator requested unions. That's a commandment of the creator. No fornication, a union. Men and women. One woman for one man. And all you people that's concentrating on extra wives and having virgins when you die, man, what the fuck is y'all issue? That's some selfish shit. The entity that created us, you think it's focused on some fucking, some fucking, that's your reward, some fucking sustenance, sun, water, earth, a place to live. That's not it. The most money in the world and the most pussy in the world. Streets paid with gold and Christianity. You getting ass when you a Muslim. Who the fuck are you people, man? And then I come. And it's just plain. It ain't no bells and whistles. Just do what the creator said. And that keep you outside of what man telling you to do. I live it. Y'all live in a belief system. Y'all believe the wrong fucking people. You believe the money. You believe the celebrity. The creator told you. Nah. Here go Malcolm X. Y'all. So y'all don't fuck with God. Malcolm X was a man against the system. Tearing a white man down. He told you don't fuck with the celebrities. Right? Y'all still fuck with the celebrities. This election that just went down. All you black people. Your celebrities. 
endorsed this guy, a white guy, mind you. Joe Biden is white, right? But that's not why they supported Joe Biden. The racist ass black people, because if it's racist, if it's racism, blacks, you it. That's it. Nobody else talks about the shit as much as you do. You do the most filth in the United States of America and then deflect with racism. Get the fuck out of here. It's time for you to stop fucking off. You voted for Joe Biden. Hands fucking down. You can't get out of it. First, y'all need to admit to that shit. But it's not the black way. Your black way is to deflect and say somebody else did it. No, all you motherfuckers voted for Kamala Harris. You some racist motherfuckers. A, a black bitch that hadn't qualified shit. But since she had a black face, that was enough. And henceforth, this is you black motherfuckers. Protect the black woman. The black woman is a queen. Nonsense. Non-fucking sense. That's not what her track record show. The track record show that the black woman is a whore. And then try to qualify it by saying you a strong single mom. Well, the creator that I follow don't give you props or perks of being a single fucking woman. And that's what I'm nailed down to. My family more successful than yours. And if, if it's not, then you know what I'm talking about. And if my family is not more successful than yours, or so you say, you married and you got something to the contrary to say, you live in a bullshit marriage because you would be happy for anybody that that marriage or whatever was going good. So you, you'll split yourself away. It ain't no competition with me. And for anybody that want competition with me, okay, this is how we're going to do that. This is who I am. I'm Evan. This is who I say I am. I teach Islam. That makes me an imam. I don't teach religion. I don't have anything to do with Muslims. I don't have anything to do with mosques. What I have to do with is what I was created to do. Same as a tree. It don't take any of y'all degrees for a tree to be a tree. Flowers didn't go to school or be flowers. The ocean did not pass any test to be oceans. Therefore, I'm Evan. I don't need any approval from any of y'all because y'all didn't create me. Y'all got that? And that's on the friendly tip, and it could be on the warring tip. Either way, just understand who I am. That's my identification. Y'all say it's not good enough. Why? Because your masters told you that? I'm my own master. And in these United States of America, I have every right that God gave. My God-given rights, one nation under God. My mother named me that bullshit Kip Darrell McFadden. That's not who I am. I'm Evan. Evan Emanuel Jeremiah. Because I say, and I don't need to be up in their paperwork. I don't have anything to do with the government at all unless I kill somebody, steal from somebody, damage somebody's property, or live in this landmass that they so-called govern, the land that Allah created. I stopped believing all that shit. And these people are afraid of me to the point that they don't want to have any talks with me. The jobs are the same, the businesses, when you go in these businesses, stop filling out these tax papers. That's not the business of the government. And since you believe it, you go right along with it, the same way you believe you black. But for some reason, you motherfuckers don't believe me when I show it to you. The eye test is not good enough for black people. On YouTube, you scary ass black people, you rather argue than press it out. So if you ever compete with me, it better be about being free. You know what I'm saying? Because that's it. That's the only place I stop. The backside, this is who I am. State and wise, constitutional shit in there. Public law 97280, U.S. Code 2000. And these aren't slick terms. That's why I need to know this shit because I'm here. And what I don't know, my ignorance, my lack of comprehensive and critical thinking, these motherfuckers will use against me. But not me. So I use that shit against them to get back what's mine. Fuck reparations. I don't pay taxes. I don't have a driver's license. None of that shit. The freedom that Allah said. I don't want any revenge. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So anybody got a hand in that swindling and shit, I'm not chasing you down. The creator burn your ass up. These people are just that. People, human beings with families. They die. They have heart attacks. IRS agents get stricken, strokes. They ain't exempt. That title don't mean shit to Allah. Therefore, it can't mean shit to me. But y'all don't believe me. And 
and people quick to say, you think you better, or you ain't no better. Do I think I'm better? Nah, I don't think I'm better than anybody, right? I know it. I know I don't pay that government taxes. Y'all do that? That would be better. This is the eye test. Y'all, I'm not going to be diplomatic with motherfuckers this loud, rowdy, and bout it, bout it. So I'm going to show you that you're not. You talk shit, but these people haven't heard one word that anybody black said because you ain't said it in their face. Saying it in their faces directly to their organization. With your pen. That's where you go at first. That's how treaties start. And then after they don't respect that treaty, you take them to war. Y'all haven't started anything but blaming white people for being fucked up. Well, this is how your so-called ancestors got enslaved. Not from Africa. From right here. Another group of people came here. Had white faces. And it was more grit in them than it was your fucking ancestors. So they took your shit. That's what happened. Your ancestors got wiped out. They don't exist no more. They exist in the blackness of these people that fucked them up, called them. See, I didn't lose what the creator instilled in all of us. This shit got on me, but it didn't go in me. It didn't penetrate, and I was covered in it. But I wasn't corrupted by it, so I still have my mind that the creator gave me, and I could see all of it. I see cowardly black men. I see whorish black women, and I see all of y'all getting mad when the truth come out. But I don't give no fucks. Y'all's against the law. So all that venom you have for me, watch yourself. Because a law puts your ass in the dirt, put your kids in the dirt, your mama in the dirt, your daddy's in the dirt. You in the dirt or not in the dirt hurt you up so bad you wish you was in the dirt. Don't talk that shit to me. I'm on the clock every day paying homage to Allah that I'm still here another day. So if one of you cocksuckers managed to get me out of here, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, that's my walk. But I ain't going to shut it down a coward because a couple cowards mad that they ain't got the balls to stand up these, these colonizers. So let's silence this nigga or we going to look like the pussies that we really are. Without government IDs and government social security cards, all that shit, tell me who you niggas are. Umar Johnson, what's in your wallet? Riza Islam, what's in your wallet? The whole nation of Islam, what's your ID look like? Y'all don't talk about that? Nah, you want to deflect on some shit. I was at Drew Hill Park yesterday. Aunt, what's up, bro? Shout out to Aunt. Shout out to... Uh, a hard stop. What's up, young fella? Shout out to all the people, the brothers that I met at Drew Hill Park. I'm there yesterday, right, with Zoe and Munch. We were there working out. So if anybody that don't know the Cal Stink journey with me is one of the things that helped save my life. You know, um, y'all believe what you want about medication. All the fuck you want. I don't believe anything. I'm the guinea pig. I'm the one with stomach cancer. I'm the one with Crohn's disease. I don't need y'all to validate me. So what I do, I share how I got healthy, right? I'm at Drew Hill Park yesterday. It's big motherfucker Theo, about 380 pounds, right? Like with everybody, I'm encouraging because you out there, you out there to work. His level ain't where my level is. Hands fucking down. He can't work like I work. He can't do anything. And it's always this competition era out of this cat. Now, I'm there to be well from the cancer. Now, genetically, what I look like, I can't do anything about that from the creator. And that looked like I'm in competition with each other because I'm cut the fuck up. And I work when I go there. And you can see the female in these men. I'm there with my wife and my daughter. So the work for me is so I can remain with my wife and my daughter. Now, that's going to look like I'm tearing shit up because I post so you can see the shit and go work. I'm a regular motherfucker. I'm not a celebrity. I put the work in and I share everything I do. I ain't complicated. But for some reason, the insecurity in this big fucker always shows up. We had a discussion yesterday. You know, I finished my reps the same way I started. I'm strong. I'm on a program. He want to train the failure. He a big nigga. It's always egos with y'all. I told that nigga that's some weak 
pussy nigga shit. For one, he shouldn't have said anything to me. One. I don't care what you do. I do 10 sets of 12. If y'all want to compete with me, start right there. And it's not a competition. First thing I say to cats down, there ain't no dick contest for me. My wife, not the, it, it could be disrespect to other women. I don't care because it's going to be somebody that, that's in their fucking feelings about the truth. But when I look at my wife, she's 52 years old. She look exactly how I want a woman to look. Exactly. I'm not settling at all. You know, at all. A lot of you love your wives. Y'all settle. I love mine and I'm not settling. Lustfully wise, I'm like, I'm a 50-something year old man. And when you get older, your eyes stay where you, your, your eyes don't age with women the way your age is. So you still keep that eye, a zesty man eye. You don't like, oh, look, she's, if she's 50 and she dropped off some, you looking at something that's younger than that. That's just natural. I don't have that issue. I see women that's 30 years younger than much that don't have kids. Their body's a mess. I see old women online talking about how good they look at that age, and they do, but they single. So it's something about you bitches that's fucked up because the looks just wasn't enough. I got a wife. I got a wife, and then I can't be like the rest of these niggas want to post up this, that, like, that's another responsibility of, of people that have. I can't put my wife on it like some thought, like, look, my wife is the shit. And she is. That's what I'm going to say. She, like, she look the way I want to look. And she 52, two kids. I ain't got no issues with women. It actually empowers me to look at them like, you ain't shit. No matter what they look like, the fortitude, I know I've been down. And aside from what she look like, her character, she dealing with her husband with cancer. Y'all can't even deal with what. Or what? So I'm walking everything out that I'm talking about. And mind you, I wasn't perfect in a relationship. Another thing of her strength, filtering my bullshit out, seeing through all that I was to see who I am. Y'all ain't that strong. Y'all always looking, y'all worse than men. Y'all just can't fuck like men, fucker. You're going to be called out for what you are, a whore. So y'all complain about men not bowing down and capitulating to y'all asses and y'all bring nothing to the relationship but fucking. Most of you women aren't wives. And, and let me share this to, to all you females so y'all can become women. The minute you looking at some man talking about what he can bring in it and you ain't looking with love and y'all, bitch, sit down. Sit the fuck down. You don't want a relationship. You want a sponsor. If that fucker don't catch your eye, like, stop being a whore. You looking at what he got, you a whore. I got a daughter. Those apply to her, too. So she raised with excellence in mind. Like, we ain't fucking nobody. She ain't in this game to date nobody. Her mom is a wife. Her mom didn't date anybody. I'm her first boyfriend. And last. 30 years later. Oh, it's doable. The perfection part. Y'all ever been married before? Anybody? That's, you ever heard the terms of marriage? Sickness, health, rich or poor, bad or worse. Hanging in. Those terms aren't in a relationship, sister. So when this nigga cheat on you, what the fuck are you talking about? He never said he wouldn't. Are y'all listening? Sisters. Did he sign something? So when he do cheat, you like, look, this motherfucker said he wasn't going to cheat. And then you can press charges against him, i.e. alimony, child support. But the government empower you bitches to be baby mothers. So you think, and the dumbass nigga think too, that he owes something because you got pregnant. He's not his wife, but he's so fucking stupid. But he'll kill a motherfucker. And he needs somebody to go to court with him and speak on his behalf because he don't know law. But what did God say? One nation under God. What did God say about boyfriends and girlfriends? 
Nobody cares about your fucking emotions, ladies. Hey, dumb niggas. When you smash this chick, um, did you sign something to say, um, as a result of fucking her, I'm good with the baby? That sounds crazy, don't it? But that's fucking reality. Y'all run around playing all these other games. One more time, young men. Did you sign something to say, oh, well, if we have sex, I take everything that come with it? Because that's what a marriage certificate is, a license for richer, sick of poor, everything. Paternity, all of that is inclusive. And a marriage certificate is saying for the world, like, look, this is me, we in a union. Ladies, when you fucking these dudes, do you have that? And if you don't have it, why is he to stay around and take care of a baby that you wanted to have? Because he didn't show up with that baby in mind. And I don't give a fuck what he said out of his mouth. We can't see it. We can't hear it. So you didn't get any documentation. That's the only thing. Listen, let me show y'all this again. Y'all don't even see this shit. Blacks, y'all, that do not comprehensively. I am in a contract with myself and Allah and none else. Y'all see that? That's me stating. If you don't state that, if you don't let these people know who you are, they pull you in. Perfect example. You see my skin. You see my features. And you just want to assume and pull me into your blackness. So I got to pump my brakes. And y'all say, hold, oh, pump your fucking brakes, nigga boy, nigga girl. I ain't black. I ain't a nigga or none of that. Don't, don't pull me into that shit. My name is Evan. I'm Evan. Y'all see the significance of that? I am Evan. The fuck do a race mean to me? Race what? I'm Evan. Now, if you can't deal with that, then something wrong with you. You don't get to pull me in anything. Your tax situation, your driver situation, your race situation. I'm Evan. And if you don't understand that, then that's the fucking problem. None of you have a right to Evan. You can offer Evan, and if Evan wants a part of it, he'll sign that contract. Say, okay, I'll give up this portion of Evan for that because I'm going to get enough to make make sure that what I lost, I'm overcompensated for. That's the only thing I'm signing up for. Everything you do is that. Everything. But blacks, you perverted that. Your emotions is the truth. You dumb fucks. You can't prove shit you say in a court of law. And you know why you can't? Because you educated and you scholarly. But who educated you? <laughs> Dumb motherfuckers. The school system is a system of lies. Lies, all of it. Designed to get a behavior out of not you. It wasn't designed to dumb blacks down. You dumb enough. It was designed to dumb down people who would offer them opposition. Those other Caucasians, motherfucker, that was ready to take it to them. So they had to dumb them down. They had to civilize them. And they gave them the Christianity. See, it was to dumb down all nations that wasn't Christians. This is class. They thought they were better than you. And the way you behave, the way you act, the way you comprehend shit, why wouldn't they think it? You still think you're black. And you'll fight anybody to talk against that shit. No, I'm not black. Don't colonize me. Don't pull me into that shit. And if you offended and I'm not black, you are the issue. You the one, not me. I offer you out. You offer violence and assaults. <laughs> Talking about people don't know themselves or they self-haters. I don't hate myself. I hate blacks. Blacks are the reason that a lot of people don't get recognized as humans. Because you wear a black moniker. And it co there's some shit that come with that. Y'all know what black is in America? Little bro, Brennan, what's up? Do y'all understand what black is? It's, it's not something good. And people don't go around just being black until something political come up. It's my little brother, Brendan, in the building right now. You will call him white. First, 
He grinning. That's it. That's all he need to be. How we get along is everything. What he look like, I don't give a fuck about it. I like the way he is. I like his character. I like as a young person how he carry himself. We family based on that. I don't identify with black people. I don't rob. I don't rape. I don't kill. I don't steal. And those are the biggest qualities that you see with these people. There's nothing else glaring. You have to say shit like, oh, we graduated from this. We graduated from that. You should be doing that. That's not exceptional. So when you... When you make regular shit, achievements, that's telling you how fucked up y'all are as a people. I'm the first one in my family went to college. So what? Who said you had to go to college? You're trying to take white achievement points and make yourself feel good. That's the supremacy. You feel the way. These white people that I'm talking about. Um, let me see. Redneck culture. You'd be surprised. In America. Well, I should have pulled up black culture in America. Shout out to the elder Thomas Sowell. Um, got a lot of information from that from that elder. Learned a lot. Ah. Let's see, y'all. Read in that culture, Thomas Soul. Sorry, y'all know about the ad bucks. What was the process of actually putting this all together? Many, many. Here we go. It has been estimated that while at least three quarters of the settlers in colonial New England originated in the lowland southeastern half of Britain. A similarly large proportion of the population of the South originated in the Scottish Highlands, Ireland, Wales, or the northern and western uplands of Roughnecks. Those arriving from Ireland in colonial times would have been from Ulster County, where Scots and Englishmen settled, since substantial immigration of the indigenous Irish did not begin until near the middle of the 19th century. Radically different cultures could develop and persist during this era before transportation and communication developed to the point of promoting widespread interactions among people in different regions. In colonial America, the people of the English borderlands and of the Celtic fringe Celtics. were seen by contemporaries as culturally quite distinct and were socially unwelcome. Mob action prevented a shipload of Ulster Scots from landing in Boston in 1719. The and the Quaker Scots. leaders of Eastern Pennsylvania encouraged Ulster Scots to settle out in Western Pennsylvania where they acted as a buffer to the Indians, as well as being a constant source of friction and conflict with the Indians. It was not just in the North that crackers and rednecks were considered to be undesirables. Southern plantation owners with poor whites living on adjoining land would often offer to buy their land for more than it was worth in order to be rid of such neighbors. Whites. Because there were no racial differences to form separate statistical categories for these North Britons and for other whites who settled in the South, or in particular enclaves elsewhere, indirect indicators must serve as proxies for these cultural differences. Names are among these indicators. White people. Edward, for example, was a popular name in Virginia and in Wessex, England, from which many Virginians had emigrated. But the first 40 classes of undergraduates at Harvard Class. College contained only one man named Edward. It would be nearly two centuries before Harvard enrolled anyone named Patrick, even though that was a common name in Western Pennsylvania, where the Ulster Scots settled. This These are white people. Y'all talking about racism. They got name division. Blacks. You behind. You all emotional. You angry. And you haven't learned anything. You've been educated. You're scholars. But you can't use that shit for reality because the people that gave it to you, they're talking about them now. They had already set up their class system. They're trying to bump elbows and say, who go here, who go there? And the people that's doing this are the well-to-dos in any of these groups of people. Money. And somehow they're going to come together under money and get these jurisdictions together under money. Come up with governments under money, but you're under that. So while they may not agree with each other, making money, business together, capitalizing is number one here in these United States of America. And you might as well say these United States of the world. Globalism, the Biden shit, it's over blacks' heads. You just local as fuck, but 
You talking the most. You got the biggest mouths in any of the groups in this and know the least about it. So no racism, no, no, no fucking no. There's something not only about the social and geographic differences of the times, but also about how regionalized the naming patterns were then. In contrast to the fact that no one today finds it particularly strange when an Asian American has such non-Asian first names as Kevin or Michelle. Even where there was no conflict or hostility involved, Southerners often showed a reckless disregard for human life, including their own. Blacks. For example, the racing of steamboats that happened to encounter each other on the rivers of the South often ended with exploding boilers, especially when the excited competition led to the tying down of safety valves in order to build up more pressure to generate more speed. An impromptu race between steamboats that encountered each other on the Mississippi illustrates the pattern. On board one boat was an old lady who, having bought a winter stock of bacon, pork, etc., was returning to her home on the banks of the Mississippi. Fun levers on board both boats insisted upon a race. Cheers and drawn pistols obliged the captains to cooperate. As the boats struggled to outdistance each other, excited passengers demanded more speed. Despite every effort, the boats raced evenly until the old lady directed her slaves to throw all her casks of bacon into the boilers. Her boat then moved ahead of the other vessel, which suddenly exploded. Clouds of splinters and human limbs darkened the sky. On the undamaged boat, passengers shouted their victory. But above their cheers could be heard the shrill voice of the old lady crying, I did it! I did it! It's all my bacon! On the Mississippi and other western rivers of the United States, as it existed in the early 19th century, it has been estimated that 30% of all the steamboats were lost in accidents. Part of this may have been due to deficiencies in the early steamboats themselves, but much of it was due to the recklessness with which they were operated on southern rivers. Nigga shit. The comments of a fireman on a Mississippi <coughs> steamboat of that era may suggest why a river voyage was considered more dangerous than crossing the Atlantic, at a time when sinkings in the Atlantic were by no means rare. Talk about northern steamers, the fireman of a Mississippi steamboat sneered to an eastern traveler in 1844. It don't need no spunk to navigate them waters. You ain't bust a biler in five years. But I tell you, stranger, it takes a man to ride one of these half alligator boats, head on a snag, high pressures, valve soldered down, 600 souls on board, and in danger of going to the devil. Nigga shit. What does 10K worth of gigs look like for me? Add y'all, my bad. Well, if you're playing at bars, probably looks like the last few months of. This was no mere idle talk. Among the steamboat explosions in the South, one on the Mississippi in 1838 killed well over a hundred people, and another near Baton Rouge in 1859 killed more than half of the 400 people on board and badly injured more than half the survivors. Southerners were just as reckless on land, whether in escapades <coughs> out of the excitement of the moment or in the many fights and deaths resulting from some insult or... There we go. Ah, let's get this same. Southerners living there were considered. Let's go, y'all. These people are creating a terrible problem in our cities. Huh. They can't or won't hold a job. Blacks. They flout the law constantly. And Blacks. They their children. Niggas. They drink too much. Niggas. And their moral standards would shame an alley cat. Fucking niggas. For some reason or other, they absolutely refuse to accommodate themselves to any kind of decent, civilized life. Niggas. This was said in 1956 mm. in Indianapolis. Not about blacks or other minorities, but about poor whites from the South. Oh. Nor was Indianapolis unique in this respect. Mm. A 1951 survey in Detroit found that white Southerners living there were considered undesirable what? by 21% of those surveyed. Racist. Compared to 13% who ranked blacks the same way. Oh, that's racist. In the late 1940s, a Chicago employer said frankly, I told the guard at the plant gate to tell the hillbillies that there were no openings. Fucking racist. whites from the south moved into northern cities to work in war plants during the Second World War. Occasionally, a white southerner would find that a flat or a furnished room had just been rented, 
when the landlord heard his southern accent. More is involved here than a mere parallel between blacks and southern whites. What is involved is a common subculture that goes back for centuries, which has encompassed everything from ways of talking to attitudes toward education, violence, and sex, and which originated not in the South, but in those parts of the British Isles from which white Southerners came. Uh oh. That culture long ago died out where it originated in Britain, while surviving in the American South. Nigga shit. Then it largely died out among both white and black Southerners, while still surviving today in the poorest and worst of the urban black ghettos. So, it is not a all your behavior, your bad behavior, you're emulating white people. And the first people that the class system discriminated against wasn't free black slaves. It was these free hillbilly redneck motherfuckers that came from the Southern Isles of Great Britain. They didn't like their style. They behaved like you. Well, you behave like them. Even the pork, your, your, your food, you follow them. Your Ebonics, you follow them. The way you talk, the way you act was, was highly appreciated in your cultures. The same with them shit that could get you killed. They get you to beat on your chest and say you a bigger man. <laughs> Nigga shit. And you learned it from white people. And you mad at these people. When you talk about white supremacy, these people right here that you talking about, I'm, I'll let you know who they became later, all right? In another audio, these particular white people, the ones that went along with this. Common for a culture to survive longer where it is transplanted and to retain characteristics lost in its place of origin. The French spoken in Quebec and the Spanish spoken in Mexico contain words and phrases that have long since become archaic in France and Spain. Regional German dialects persisted among Germans living in the United States after those dialects had begun to die out in Germany itself. Young people. A scholar specializing in the history of the South has likewise noted among white Southerners archaic word forms. While another scholar has pointed out the continued use in that region of terms that were familiar at the time of the first Queen Elizabeth. The card game whist is today played almost exclusively by blacks, especially low income blacks, though in the 18th century it was played by the British upper classes and has since then evolved into bridge. The history of the evolution of this game is indicative of a much broader pattern of cultural evolution in much more weighty things. Southern whites not only spoke the English language in very different ways from whites in other regions, their churches, their roads, their homes, their music, their education, their food, and their sex lives were all sharply different from those of other whites. The history of this redneck or cracker culture is more than a curiosity. It has contemporary so, significance. Let me, let me stop this right here. So for y'all blacks that see this, y'all gonna share this? All the monkey shit y'all got going viral. Look, <coughs> shout out to B more. I was born and raised there from 1967 and now I'm still here. Um, I was outside. I wasn't selling drugs. I wasn't wilding out. Wasn't roughnecking. But I was outside. I wasn't afraid of the city. Shout out to Rob and Black down at Lawrence and Division down behind Shake and Bake. I hung out down there. Shout out to Dan Joyner, Drew Hill Avenue, White Lock. Uh, shout out to Stokey. Stokey. Stokey from Baltimore. Stokey. Stokey. When you say it, shout out to Stokey. Um, Parkite, shout out to... I'm from Baltimore. I got a video on my channel. The police pulled me out my car, right? Um, this is the video on this channel, YouTube. Shout out to YouTube as well. But I'm uploading this from um, Instagram. So... On the video, I get arrested for not giving the police my driver's license because I know I don't need to have a driver's license. It's right here, right? Right here on this channel. I'm from Baltimore, easily accessible for, for something that's good. For the bullshit, not so much. You know what I'm saying? For the bullshit, not so much. But, um... If you want information on on um, how to deal with the police, the law, situations like that, I could tell you, right? Baltimore. The video is up. 
I do get arrested in a video, but getting arrested is not the thing. Anybody that's a criminal, that's a real criminal, you know that getting arrested isn't the end of the game, right? It's if they can keep you on what they got you for. And I'm talking about criminals because that's a part of your game. Staying in jail is is the part that you don't want to do. Getting pinched, it comes with it, right? You know when you go to war, you get punched in the face. Getting knocked out is is the loss. So let's say they grabbed me. That's a punch in the face. I went to win. What I went to get was my right not to have a driver's license, not to need a Maryland plate on my car, and the police put on a magnificent show right here. I get kidnapped for knowing my, knowing my rights. It's here on this YouTube. Story. So I went to jail. They gave me two months in jail, but I didn't go to jail for not having a driver's license or not or not uh, having a registration. What what the judge did, and it was sneaky. Judge Philip Trabasi in Tulsa, Nicholas Philip Trabasi, for you. Look up my case. See what happened. Everything that was pertaining to the traffic stop went away. No fines. I didn't pay anything. But his feelings was hurt because I knew the law in front of people. So he wasn't lawful. He was deceitful and sentenced me to two months in jail for not following a lawful order. However, I had not broken any law. So the police shouldn't have been there in the first place. You ask these officers to articulate a crime. That's everything. And what backs that up is knowing that traffic infractions are not crimes. It just common sense should tell you that. This is what God gave us. If you haven't harmed another individual human being, these made up forms and things that people say you're guilty of, you're guilty of them if you signed up and said, all right, I'll keep these things. But knowingly signed up, y'all ignorantly sign all these contracts, be they job applications, license applications, and your government is deceitful on purpose. They pull you into something that you sign. You don't know. You're like, oh, yeah, now you win it. Because they're not giving you transparency. It's deceit. And any contract that you signed into unknowingly, it voids the contract. But you got to have some balls in your pants. I can't give you all balls. I can give you all the information. The balls, they're going to be yours. And I'm not asking the sisters to do it because the brothers do it and the sisters come with you. Munch not going to face the government. I'm going to King Kong that shit. This is my castle. So I protect it. She get everything that come with it. Noah built the ark. Noah built the ark. Not his wife. Was she on it? His whole family was on that bitch. I'm building this ark. So everybody, I got an ark. I faced that storm. That big ass flood, that driver's license, the income taxes. I went in there in the name of Allah. You can call them what you want, but they can't control a lot. Now, they can control these policies and these feelings and make you feel the way that you black, you from Africa. When we go into a court of law, all that shit you believe, you can't manifest none of it. None of you can. The IRS can't be manifested in court. It's got to be a man or woman that said, I did something to them. They need to articulate a motherfucking crime. And the only crimes that you can commit, period, are against the law. That's the creator. Here's your order for creation. But y'all fall in love with the fucking stories, right? Those stories are for children. To give you wisdom and understanding because you bitches couldn't read. Your ancestors was dumb. The motherfuckers couldn't read. That's it. End the story. But I comprehend. I didn't lose anything that the creator gave me. The cancer actually magnified it. It made me focus. It gave me laser fucking focus. And I always had perspective. That was my gift. And now I'm honing that shit. So I see stuff that a, as soon as it's happening, you don't have to believe. I don't need you to believe. I don't have the driver's license. I don't pay the taxes. I got videos showing me going to war. All I see is niggas marching in circles. You have never addressed your actual enemy. These treaties, these signatures, that shit right there is where it starts. And if they don't respect it, then you take them to war right in front of everybody. They're going to have to explain how they whipping my back in the times we don't have slaves. And all of y'all going to see that. But y'all ain't ready to lay it all on the fucking line. What am I scared of? 
the only threat is one of you motherfuckers. The government ain't gonna fuck with me. I'm gonna get killed by one of y'all for telling y'all the truth about your fucking slavery, your blackness, you single whores. That's what you are. Buck the fuck up, bite down on it, say we fucked up. We fucked up. We need to fix it. Voting for Biden because he has some black bitch with him, black excellence. That shit is a is a captivity in itself. Ain't nobody black around this motherfucker. Your thoughts are black. Everybody on the planet is brown. You don't absorb them into your fucking slavery. Those are free people who call themselves different names. Kenyans, uh, Igbo, how's it? Black as fuck. But they're not black people. Y'all are the most ignorant motherfuckers on the planet and you proud of it. And all you have is threats, violence, and war. But for the government, you don't show none of that. Your sons with all these guns robbing and all this shit, the government take every fucking penny that you make. Ta Why y'all ain't telling y'all kids turn y'all guns on them? We seen them take over. <clears throat> we seen them smash and grab all that beautiful energy, beautiful violence, but misguided. That's what the mobs was. You niggas talk about lynching. These white people that I'm letting you hear about now, the ones that gave you your nigger behavior. Do you think that they did not lynch other motherfucking whites? Are you crazy? This is your limited understanding for black people. So you easier to enslave than anybody. And it's your blackness. You strong, that strong black coffee. The blacker you are, the fucking dumber you are. You need to lighten up. Its influence on the economic and social evolution of vast numbers of people, millions of blacks and whites, and its continuing influence on the lives and deaths of a residual population in America's black ghettos, which has still not completely escaped from that culture. From early in American history, foreign visitors and domestic travelers alike were struck by cultural contrasts between the white population of the South and that of the rest of the country in general. Racism. And of New England in particular. Racism. In the early 19th century, Alexis de Tocqueville contrasted white Southerners with white Northerners in his classic Democracy in America, and Frederick Law Olmsted did the same later in his books Racism. about his travels through the antebellum South, Racism. notably Cotton Kingdom. Racism. De Tocqueville set a pattern when he concluded that almost all the differences which may be noticed between the Americans in the Southern Watch and in the Northern states have originated in slavery. Olmsted likewise attributed the differences between white Southerners and white Northerners to the existence of slavery in the South. So did widely read antebellum Southern writer Hinton Helper, who declared that slavery, and nothing but slavery, has retarded the progress and prosperity of our portion of the Union. Liberal whites. <clears throat> Just as they explained regional differences between whites by slavery, so many others in a later era would explain differences between blacks and whites nationwide by slavery. Hmm. Plausible as these explanations may seem in both cases, they will not stand up under a closer scrutiny of history. It is perhaps understandable that the great overwhelming moral curse of slavery has presented a tempting causal explanation of the peculiar subculture of Southern whites, mm. as well as that of blacks. Yet this same subculture had existed among Southern whites and their ancestors in those parts of the British Isles from which they came got long before they had ever seen a black slave. The nature of this subculture among people who were called rednecks and crackers in Britain before they ever saw America needs to be explored before turning to the question of its current status among ghetto blacks and how developments in the larger society have affected its evolution. More ads, folks. Oh, no, that's not ads. It's over. <clears throat> Let me see what else we got here by terms of that. Why black culture? So so that's that's the elder Thomas Soul. Listen to Thomas Soul, Larry Elder, uh, Judge Joe Brown. They tell the truth more so. These are more men that would stand up on being men. But they also, the, the pressure of being black or the ignorance of it, or them just going along with the term black, that limits them to a certain degree. But again, if I get wood from a Home Depot, as long as it's good wood, I'll build what I need to build. And they do have some good wood. They building a little off with the good wood, and that's the the identi the identifying with black. Like you, you gotta get outside of that. That's 
that's not good for comprehension. Please don't let your kids grow up black. Like, that's all I could tell you. I mean that from the inside. Like, my kids didn't grow up black. They didn't grow up learning about slavery. They don't need a Frederick Douglass as their messiah. You understand me? They don't need a Harriet Tubman as their messiah. None of those people they need is their messiah because none of those people changed anything. Anything that got changed is by the hands of Allah, the creator. What is is what is because that's the will of Allah. And the will is good. That's it. So whatever, whoever y'all are, it's going to be used for the will of Allah. Like the evil that happened, it's going to be used for the will of Allah. I create the light. I create the darkness, the good, the evil. I, Allah, do all these things. Y'all don't want to see that part. You created a Satan for yourselves. You always had these sanctuaries that you run into because you're not accountable. You run into one place and confess to a man like this motherfucker ain't whacking off to the sound of your voice. Skeet, skeet, skeet. And then go out and molest the boy. I do not believe in man. Everything y'all say is off and is is ruled by what you what your heart is near and dear to. What's natural to you? Homosexuality, racism, whatever these things are, y'all can't see past the equity of Allah. It's all the same. So here's the rules. You all have a chance to abide by them or not. So here's the punishment. You all have a chance to get it or not. I can't go off of what you men talking about. I can't be governed by this government. One, I'm anti-homosexual. Anti. To all the gay people, that's where it is with me. You cannot like me openly for that. You cannot like me because I'm heterosexual. I will not take you to court or call it a crime of hate. What I call it is your fucking preference, right? Stay out my way. The book that I get my morality from actually speaks against homosexuality. I don't know another book like that. The book that I follow and, and the order, never mind the stories, the order, the behavior, because I don't care about any other man's life, how many times you whacked off and took it in the ass. That's going to manifest itself in your life. I don't have to police a homosexual. I don't have to police somebody to eat shrimp, pork. The physical touching me, harming me, my property is different. Anything else, you're going to deal with a law through that. You promised it. None of y'all did anything about the way I eat. I eat what the fuck I want. You can't tell me what to eat. Fuck are y'all. You'd be crossing the line if you try to tell me what to eat. So I ate what I want. I got stomach cancer. Now, I know who a law is. Y'all don't know. You think that that was just... Coincidence. And you got down and start praying to Jesus. I had a couple cars repossessed. And I'm making an excess of 100 k a year. At FedEx. It's no way. I should have had anything getting repossessed. With all that money with no order, it don't mean shit. I wasn't in order to receive. It, it just, you can't keep it. It's not going to be that way. Your morality not straight. You're going to lose everything. I got two minutes left, y'all. And I'm winding down right now. I'll be back with part two of this, all right? Appreciate everybody that's going to look at the replay <coughs> and take it in. Don't get offended because you black. <coughs> Just stop being black. And it is that easy. I showed you. I'm Evan. I'm not black. And none of y'all will make me be black. You might be angry and trying to tell me what your master told you, but I'm not black. And why is it so important that I be black? That's what you need to ask yourself. And then your kids. That's how it continue. You'd rather be black than, than free. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah, y'all.